I'm an electrical engineering student, but I must confess that I've never created electricity to power things. It feels a bit weird, because it's like being a wizard that can't cast any spells. So I'm going to make myself a generator from scratch that hopefully powers something like an LED, AirPods, and other electronic devices so that I can feel legit, of course. But generators can be pretty complex. They are found in well-designed wind turbines, dams, and power plants spinning at over a thousand revolutions per minute to power entire cities. It might be a little hard, might require some mechanical engineering, which is not my forte, but I'll think of something. It's my first time making anything like this, but I know the theory from university, and that should work out, probably. In my head, at least. But the 300 bucks I spent and the many iterations have something to say about that. Okay, so I want to make a proof of concept before apparently blowing those 300 bucks out the window. So I've gotten some wire wrapped into a coil, and if I allow electricity to run through it, it can attract a nearby magnet. Kind of. In fact, we can reverse this and use the magnet to create electricity by moving it back and forth in front of the coil. We can see how much electricity we make by measuring the voltage. Voltage is what pushes electrons, making them move, which is what electricity is. More voltage means more electricity. So I was hoping to get a number like half a volt or one volt, but no, we got a max of probably 0.02 volts. And as you can see, that's very small. For context, I would need like 5 volts or more, which is what I want to be able to charge things like electronics. So that means I'll need like 250 times the voltage somehow. But don't worry, I have a plan. So you might have seen this before. It's a magnetic field, and it turns out if you move the magnet so that the magnetic field lines slap into a loop of wire, changing the amount of magnetic field through the loop of wire, you get voltage. But we want more. A lot more. One way to get more is by moving the magnet very fast. Pretty simple. We can also use a coil with many turns, with each turn duplicating the voltage creation effect. Another trick is to use a material that can concentrate more magnetic field lines through itself, increasing the voltage creation effect. So those are a few tricks I can use to get more voltage, but now it is time to design the generator that should hopefully bring us to 5 volts. And here it is. This holds 12 coils of wire with many turns which are wrapped around these little templates. I used steel bolts to help concentrate the magnetic field lines through the coils, which should hopefully increase how much voltage we make. If we connect the 12 coils one after the other, then the voltage created is 12 times as much compared to if we only used one coil. However, I'm planning to use two pairs of six coils connected one after the other. Wires can only handle a certain amount of current, which is the measure of how much electricity is flowing. But if we just split it up into two sets of coils, then each set would have half the current through it compared to one set of coils, assuming the same current output. Now for the fun part, these discs have magnets embedded in them, with magnet directions changing as they go around. If we spin the magnets across the coil, then the changing magnet directions cause a large change in magnetic field through the coils, maximizing voltage. Then we can add a second rotor to increase the strength of each direction, causing an even bigger change and more voltage. And then we just try and spin these discs very fast using gears mounted on a base structure and pray that we get over 5 volts. Being a beginner, I took inspiration from Tom Stanton's design, with a few additions being the stainless steel bolts and more coils. So I bought the parts. Kind of expensive, but fortunately I'm sponsored by PCBWay. More on them later. I assembled the parts for the first test, which hopefully would create more voltage than my little experiment. If I could screw in, it's threaded. Oh, this is gonna be a pain, I can kind of tell. Oh wait, I need the ball bearings. We got our fer uh, Ferris wheel of death right here. Um, Gonna, it's gonna create a lot of electricity and we're all gonna die. So yeah, really split it. So my guess is that the multimeter can't detect any voltage because the voltage looks like this over time instead of this. And this is caused by the cyclical spinning nature of generators. The multimeter shows average voltage over time and the average voltage of this is zero. So the wave needs to turn into a line and this can do just that. It's called a full bridge rectifier. Uh, sounds very flux capacitory, but its job is simple. It's made out of things called diodes, which only allows electricity to flow through it in one direction. A clever arrangement of four of these can turn electricity going back and forth like this one 
and turn it into electricity that goes in one direction by turning the negative or backwards part of the wave into the positive. These are capacitors, um, not flux capacitors, just normal capacitors, which can temporarily store electricity for later. Because of that, it fills in the gaps of the lumpy wave, smoothening it out into something closer to a line, which is what we need and also what electronics need. So I started soldering. First with two capacitors soldered together, as it would increase the voltage capacity. Then with the diodes. You'll be able to see the resemblance of the full bridge rectifier in real life. Pretty cool. Then it's just about combining the two together, attaching wires, hooking it up to a coil, and we're all good. So I'm gonna try and spin this. No way. Oh wait, never mind. What if I unsoldered these? There's something. Point two. Point three. And it's going down. Well, I would say that is a uh, resounding failure. We did generate electricity, um, which is able to charge absolutely nothing. So uh, we managed to get 10 times the voltage as the experiment, bringing us to 0.2 volts. But we still have a long way to go to get to 5 volts, which is like 25 times the amount that we have now. So yeah. So I thought about what may cause so little voltage to be created. Then I thought about the strength of the magnets. I mean, I bought these from Amazon. So not off to a good start. So what did I do? I bought magnets on Amazon. But don't worry, this time I bought an N52 grade magnet, which is the strongest grade of neodymium magnet. I just gotta hope that they're not lying. So now I need to redesign the rotor to fit these new magnets and start printing them. I decided to get started on winding the rest of the coils as the parts printed and the magnets were being shipped. Okay, so the magnets arrived. So these come with um, danger symbols, very, very welcoming and they don't fit. Oh, crap. At this point, I'm doubting every single millimeter in my designs and tweaking out, but I accepted the fact that I am too deep into this to back out, and I redesigned again. Unfortunately, they fit this time. Oh, that might be it. There we go. It's in. This test will let us know how much voltage we get from one coil and one rotor. Let's slide this right in there. There we go. Oh, we're up to point 0.8. Now, I wanted to see what happens if we get two rotors in here and see if it further increases the magnetic strength through the coil, increasing voltage. I don't know. Oh, jeez. But there's a problem. Oh, wow, there's a lot more friction here. It seems that the rotors are rubbing up against parts of the generator and preventing me from spinning the rotors as fast as possible. So I designed multiple spacers to try out and keep the rotor from scraping the stator components. This in there should be fairly simple. Point five. Ah, generators are so hard. You know what? I'm gonna put in one of these on the edges so that these plates don't come together. I don't know what it will take for this thing to break one bolt. I just want two volts or something per coil. The parts like the shaft, the gears, and the handle fit loosely with each other, so I designed for tighter fits, using a lot of tape, of course. Try and get it together. Oh, I think I got it. Yes, I got it. Let's put this together. These very highly friction fit pieces. Yeah, there we go. We got our uh, complementary tape there. Better. Here we go, moment of truth. One volt. We got one volt. We got double what we got before. Now it's time to assemble the full generator. As originally planned, I wired six coils, one after the other, and had two pairs of those so that we can increase current capacity and have six times the voltage compared to the voltage of one coil. It's going in. There we go. 
we go. I got one of these. It is a voltmeter, and um, we just plug in three wires. Hello? Doesn't seem like it's doing anything. And apparently we get no voltage. So I sat there, racking my brain. Then it hit me. The coils could be fighting each other. Each coil produces a voltage that goes up and down over time, but I need all of the coils to have their voltages go up and down at the same time. But right now, it's more like this, all disorganized with the voltages fighting each other. It's like tug of war, but everyone on my team, except me of course, is pulling at the wrong time. Solution? The right quantity of magnets. Right now, with 20 magnets and 12 coils, each coil wouldn't rise or fall in voltage at the same time as others, because magnet directions and positions above each coil are different. The magic number is 26 magnets, because there are 13 coil positions, with one of them used as the base of the stator. 26 magnets allow for every coil to have the same magnet directions above them, meaning their voltages rise and fall together, so that when combined, they don't fight, but build upon each other, and win at tug of war. Okay, so another redesign of the rotor, with 26 slots for magnets this time. So I still need additional magnets to arrive, but I can still test with what we have. Jeez, come on. Okay, so the problem of friction is back to bite us, and this time it's the steel bolts. Seems like they attract the magnets too well. Still super annoying, but whatever. So to fix this, I could use plastic bolts, and that means more redesign. There we go. It's a bit large. There we go. Nice. It is very wobbly, but still good nonetheless. Let's go. Get out of the way, man. There we go. Bro, what? Why is it shaking so much? <laughs> oh my goodness, bro. There's like so much heavy stuff over here and nothing over there. So that's why it was creating a, a Richter 7 scale earthquake. So here we go. Positive, negative. We got seven, seven volts. So yeah, it works. I just need um, to complete the full rotor over here with all of the magnets. And here they are. Let's see what we can do. There we go. Eight. We got ten. Eleven. Twelve. Come on. And we got thirteen. Unlucky number. Yep, we got it. Let's see how long. So that here happens. it is. We're gonna try and actually power something and uh, make this somewhat useful. Hopefully you guys can see that. So I'm just gonna power it up and see what happens. Do the generator thingy. Oh, there we go. We got some LEDs. I'm gonna use a USB cable, so very simple. And hopefully it doesn't blow up. Let's go. Three, four, five. There we go. We got we got it at five something volts. Okay, so I think we can graduate now to a more expensive device. And that very expensive device is an Apple AirPod. And I charge my AirPods. Here we go. Let's see it. Three, four. There we go. There's the orange LED. It's literally lit. Oh, it's off. Yeah, I don't know if this thing is being charged or what. Is this broken? I don't know. Does it turn off like that? I don't even know. Hello? I don't know why it turns off like that, but um... Okay, so let's try this. This is used to charge my microphone and all that. Did I accidentally fry this? Maybe I did fry it. Arduino is a more basic device. It doesn't need to really communicate to its, you know, charging device. This thing's too basic. 
You're too basic, bro. Too basic. So the generator itself actually okay. works. Just not this Amazon fast charger, as they say. Maybe I could make my own charger so that this generator can actually charge something. Well, there's something I've been working on that I haven't been showing you. Sorry. Basically, I've been working on a side project while I was waiting for all of my parts to print. And that side project is to make my own of these. It involves two things, a buck converter and a USB charging chip. I'm not gonna get too deep into this, but buck converters essentially take a higher voltage and turn it into a lower voltage while also increasing current output as a byproduct. And this is the bare bones circuit that can do that. It can do that because of a magical thing called average voltage. So if you turn this switch on for 25% of the time and off 75% of the time, then the average voltage is 25% of the voltage coming in. The increase in current comes from a coil of wire, something we've seen before. In this case, electricity goes into the coil and the energy is stored in a magnetic field, which can later be used to continue the flow of current when the switch is off, causing a higher current than the current going into the circuit. I can now connect the output of this buck converter, which creates a steady 5 volts, into the USB charging chip, which takes care of the USB charging stuff. Okay, now I need to make this thing real. I use PCBWay, the sponsor of this video, to make my PCB. KiCad, the software I used to design this circuit, has a plugin that allows me to send PCBWay my design with just a button. I normally keep all default settings as they work for basic projects. I need to get a stencil for this project so that I can solder specific components to the PCB, so I check that off and send in the order for a PCBWay engineer to check for any issues. Once they verify that it's good, I make the purchase and I should get it within a week. Okay, so all the parts are in, and now for the satisfying part. So before I accidentally blow anything up, I'll need to test this circuit with a battery and see if the board can actually charge some non-expensive things. There we go. Let's go. Custom PCB actually works, surprisingly. So now for the real test with the generator. Four, five. Oh, there we go. There's the orange LED. Maybe it just, I don't know, with these kind of devices, it only lights up orange the first time, but never after that. Let's do it again. If it lights up for the second time, then that means that I just somehow made a better USB charger than whatever they sold on Amazon. The, the one on Amazon doesn't light up the LED the second time. <clears throat> Here we go. Here we go, guys. No way. No freaking way. Well, okay, let's test it one more time. Maybe. Maybe it'll prove itself. Charger is powered on. I don't see it going up. There has to be enough voltage at this point. But then if I, if I go back to that, it's probably gonna charge. Yeah, there we go. We're charging. The custom PCB actually did a better job somehow. So now I feel more like an electrical engineer with a few fun spells under my belt. All thanks to this project. So was it an expensive project? Yeah. And I probably wouldn't have done this project if I knew the cost, but luckily I didn't.